And what would you say to someone who feels kind of that like shame around how their anxiety influences their their sex drive? Is there a way to kind of regulate in the moment or is it a matter of like communicating with your partner? Well, I think first of all, I, I would invite anybody who's feeling shame around something that their body is doing to examine where that shame comes from. And so often it comes from an expectation that we have on ourselves about what we should or should not be feeling or doing. And as long as everybody involved is providing affirmative consent, there's no wrong way to be sexual, right? And I think that's a really important mm. thing to note. And also, if you're not feeling sexual, that's okay. Mm. Right. You never have to apologize for not wanting to be into it in that moment. So the shame piece, I think, is a really interesting piece to sit back and disentangle a bit because usually we feel a pressure to be or act or feel or be sexual in a certain way. And when we can get some distance, then we can make space and give ourselves permission for whatever is our reality and advocate with our partner for what we need in a way that feels a lot more authentic and actually gets us closer to getting our And I was just saying, your voice is so amazing. And it's actually when I first, when we met you at the House of Wise party, it was like what I thought about you where you're so in your body. Hmm. And I think that's such a, when you have or have done the embodiment work that you have done. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's such a result of that. And then the voice comes through so much clearer mm -hmm. for those that I know that are really embodied because it's almost like the voice is coming from like deep inside the belly. Mm -hmm. What are your, like what's been your embodiment experience or journey? Because I think a lot of our listeners are women that would like to feel more embodied, mm -hmm. would like to feel more confident, would like to feel more present, but are having a hard time navigating it with the world today. Such a great question. And and first I want to say that, you know, an embodiment practice is a practice, right? It's not something that we just do once and then poof, the light switch is flipped and we're embodied forever. It's ongoing. And my journey has been really long in that with periods where I'm really active and periods where my practice wanes. But I really started to think about being more embodied many years ago when I first started grad school. So Around 2005, 2004, 2005, I started doing yoga. And yoga for me became a, a, a surprise home. I had no idea that I would feel the way I would feel in my body. And I had no idea how dissociated I was in my body. So yoga gave me a place to really be curious about you know, everything going on in my body and my and in my mind in reaction to it. And I think that's really the gift of any embodiment practice, whether you practice, um, you know, Qigong or Tai Chi or yoga or stretching or any kind of um, Pilates or just anything that gives you the opportunity for slowness and stillness in your body because you develop what's called interoception. And interoception is the perception of what's internal. Right, And that's the gift of embodiment that allows us to become so empowered from within because we learn how to discern all of our body's cues and make sense of them. And so, you know, my, my practice with yoga has evolved for many, many years. I eventually went on and got a yoga teacher certificate and taught in the prison systems for many years and um, developed my dissertation around the use of certain kinds of yoga for the treatment of sexual trauma. And it's been a really active part of my life, you know, throughout my whole adulthood, really. Mm -hmm. What's happening when when someone is kind of becoming disembodied or like leaving their body um is there something happening nervous system wise emotionally mm -hmm. that you can explain yeah the the short answer is that it's protection mm -hmm. in the moment right when we dissociate when we leave our body or when we check out even if it's not so extreme as to become derealized or depersonalized, um, what we're really doing is keeping ourselves safe from an experience of integration because for whatever reason, it doesn't feel okay to be in our body. That might be because of what's happening in the here and now or maybe because of what happened some other time in our history. But our body says, yikes, and our brain goes, no problem, I'll take you out of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. helps us just distract. So we can, we can dissociate or distract in lots of different ways, through numbing out, through um, you know, actually leaving our body, through 
being really distractive and compulsive in an activity. Yeah, I feel like if in sex, it's like something that I think happens for a lot of women. It's, you know, in the far end where it's like the traumatic response, but then also it's like, I feel like and what I'm hearing from my friends and my community is that they're becoming less and less interested in sex. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with the modern life. And I'm curious if you're hearing that as well with women and what is the conversation that you think we should be having or that you're having with your clients? Great question. I'm, I'm hearing a few different things. And, and to echo that, yes, I am hearing that a lot of women, a lot of straight cisgender women are having a big shift within their relationship with sex for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I think there's a bit of a sexual recession happening in the pandemic. You know, when we are sheltering in place with, with partners or people, you know, uh, yeah, partners or whom, whomever is your mm -hmm. living significant other, um, you start just seeing them in every dimension of life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And <laughs> it's just not always very sexy. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't feel very sexy. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we've we got that sort of over-familiarity that we're contending with, but also the weight of the stressors of everything that has been this last year and a half Um with regard to the pandemic, with regard to politics, with regard to all of it. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.